Hello, friends. Welcome to Scientific Investing. And uh, uh, we have a new stock analysis today. And uh, this is going to be a techno funda analysis. So what we mean by techno funda is basically we blend both technical analysis and fundamental analysis. And I have various scanners and uh, two screen companies which are looking interesting fundamental wise or uh, technical scanners where I find companies which are interesting technical wise. And uh, I try to play both momentum as well as value. And one of the ways to find value is where I look for companies which have corrected a lot. So usually if you'll see the technical analysis world, it is said that, you know, stay away from companies falling knives and all which have corrected. Uh, but I do look at those names because that is where fundamentally you get value. And uh, we teach in our technical analysis course how to do that. Uh, one of the technical analysis strategy, techno funda strategy we have, we call it Gumega. So Gumega means uh, whether it will reverse. And the idea is to look for the stocks which have fallen a lot. There is enough value uh, to be extracted fundamentally. And then we look for the technical signs uh, where the stock reverses its price movement. And from there, uh, it's not about 10, 15 day trading. It's about uh, building a position over three to six month period and then let uh, results and let price uh, decide where we are going in six to 12, 14 months. In fact, some of the videos which I made earlier where the stocks were not doing well, like if you take an Aegis logistic example, that stock came out of our Gumega strategy. So there is another stock which has come on my radar and I thought I will quickly discuss with you. So the stock name is EPL. So first let us start with the chart of EPL, how it came on our radar and how it came on our scanner. So let me share my screen. Now, if we look at the chart, this is the EPL chart and uh, we can see that this stock basically uh, post COVID, all these stocks were moving and even this stock moved, but somewhere in early late 2020, August 2020, this stock topped around 300 rupees. And then from August 20 to April 2023, almost for two and a half years, this stock has not gone anywhere. This stock has underperformed Nifty and it is almost 50% down in two and a half years. So these are the kind of stocks where I look for fundamental triggers and if I see there is enough value on screen. So it's not like I was buying this downtrend. So this is how I leverage technical analysis. I didn't buy this downtrend. You can see the stock has formed a very, very strong base. The correction stopped here and there are four instances of strong base formation. This level of 150 again and again, it has come as a support. And slowly, if you are in technicals, if you are aware of a rounding bottom pattern, uh, my sense is we have seen the half side of that rounding bottom pattern. Maybe we will see the other half, which is in upward direction or who knows, you can see there is a big volume buy and a correction happened. It might go for one or two more rounds. And that is why I said it's not about 10, 15 days of trade. It is more about investing uh, purposes where you don't try to exactly time it, but still you have timed it enough so that you have avoided last two and a half years of fall. You have avoided 50% of loss. There are fundamental triggers and you look to ride the journey sooner or later upward with maybe a three to six month of lag. And you can see whenever the stock is rising, you have very good volume. Whenever the stock is falling, the volumes are less. So this is a good sign that some strong accumulation is going on. So this is what uh, brought uh, uh, the stock on my radar and I started tracking it. So I've been tracking this stock from last one and a half months. And I felt when the time is right, uh, I thought of discussing with you. Now, if we look at this, this is the technical side. Now, let us look at the fundamental side. What is this company? And uh, so far, I have not told, told you what is EPL. So let me tell you what this company does. So basically, EPL is one of the largest laminated tube manufacturers. So like all of you, we, we use toothpaste. So that toothpaste laminated tube is there. Or we use face creams and all of that moisturizer. So everything comes in these kind of tubes. So EPL is one of the biggest manufacturers of laminated tubes with 8 billion tube capacity. They are a global leader in the oral care. And then slowly they have also gotten into other segments like beauty and cosmetics, pharma, personal care and all. So you can see now it is evenly balanced. Earlier it used to be primarily into oral care and they have diversified. Now it is fairly balanced and 
most of the companies you will see in this FMCG world, they are their clients and uh, well-known company. And uh, they have, I mean, they do a lot of uh, processes work. They do a lot of innovation in terms of new technologies which are coming. If you read the annual reports, they have a quite good amount of patents around it. Uh, so very good company that way. But one more thing, interesting thing which happened in this company two years back, uh, Mr. Anand Kripalu, he joined as a managing director and global CEO. Now, why I am highlighting his name is, uh, I hope all of you are aware about the whole uh, Kingfisher crisis and the Vijay Malia crisis and uh, he used to own United Spirits. And when Vijay Malia left United Spirits, the company was in a very, very poor state. So what I am showing you is a PNL of uh, United Spirits Limited. And you can see in 2014, this company was a loss-making company piled in debt, more than 8,000 crore of debt. This is when Mr. Anand Kripalu, he took over and look at the kind of transformation he did to USL in six years from a minus 4,400 crore loss to almost six, 700 crore of profit from a 8,000 crore debt reduced to 2,500 crores of debt. So this is the kind of caliber he has. And those of you who closely track me, if you have uh, seen my yesterday's tweet, I told all of us, we create watch list of companies, but it will be very interesting to create a watch list of business leaders, promoters who run these companies. Uh, when I met that tweet, these are the kind of leaders I had in my mind. And I have seen like in my last eight, 10 years of experience, I have seen, you know, these leaders or their promoters when they go, they make tons of, I mean, they create a lot of wealth and many times the businesses of some of these leaders, it goes through headwinds and market, you know, punishes the stock badly, but good leaders, the sign is, you know, they come back, they make a strong comeback. So his previous experience is something which is very, very remarkable in terms of what he did to USL. So uh, when he shifted to EPL, uh, this company was always on my radar. But as I said, uh, the charts didn't look good. The valuations didn't look good. So I didn't take interest. And, you know, in the market, you have to be, you need to have a hawk eye. You don't need to buy and sell every day. You need to watch. But when there's a right time, you have to attack. So after two and a half years, 50% price correction, I believe uh, things could be good and uh, this is where I am slowly converting from watching to taking action. So I do have an exposure in whatever I'm discussing. It's uh, not a recommendation. I have added the stock uh, in last 30 days in my portfolio. If we see how the portfolio has emerged for this company, we can clearly see that, you know, in 11, they were only in face care. Then 15, they got into few more. Then in 20, they started getting into more segments and you can see, now they are almost into all of these segments with almost a 15% CAGR. If we look at the history, the last few years have not been good. If we see, you know, 8% sales growth rate and profit growth rate is almost flat. So there is a reason why market has punished this stock. And uh, if we see cash flow wise, maybe a 5% cash flow growth, which is nothing decent and the asset growth has been higher. The only good thing is your debt is lesser. But these are cash flow growth has been an issue. But balance sheet and cash flow, that is not an issue. You can see that there is a very good EBITDA to cash flow conversion, which is there. Uh, the dividend, uh, they have given decent dividend and the company has been generating free cash flow. If we see in terms of receivables and inventory, all of that is good. The problem is the company has done CapEx, but still the company has not been able to generate the growth. The other thing, if you monitor is uh, the gross margins are less compared to average. So it's far from its uh, maximum gross margin and almost closer to minimum against 51% gross margin. Right now they're at 52.5%. In fact, if we look at the EBITDA margin currently, it, the company has one of the worst EBITDA margins of lifetime. So uh, in my community, and if you want to know how I generate these charts, so these are all automated process. Uh, we do have a tool, stock analysis tool. And uh, you can go to our website and you can buy it. But uh, when I uh, discussed this company within my scientific investing community, one of the comments was the P is high, the P is 26. 
the see the problem is when your margins are suppressed i have told repeatedly again and again and again when the margins are suppressed if you take any valuation metric which has earnings on the lower side until unless you don't normalize the earning it's just a simple mathematics which which won't lead anywhere if it was that simple then just doing a simple pe calculation and things would have worked so you have to look at why the margin is low is this sustainable will it go higher and then only you have to look at pe so at that time any non eps metric works much better than a pe eps kind of metric and also the business is little asset heavy because uh, you can see the asset turn net fixed asset turn is at best it's around 2 to 2.5 and that you can see that company's cash flow is much much higher than fat but not that higher compared to ebitda because they have a decent amount of depreciation so what is happening almost on the 1500 crore asset they are doing 3000 crore of revenues and they have almost 8 10% depreciation which means almost uh, 150 crore goes in your maintenance capex and some small capex so that is why uh, another reason why you will see pe will be always 26 27 but when you will see this company on a av ebitda basis you will see around 10 12 so that is how we have to look at this business but despite of all of that decent roe decent rosi right now the margins are suppressed so these are like lifetime lowest kind of rosi margin all of that now let us try to understand what is changing so you saw in the chart side you could see there is a base formation which is happening and there was a correction so if you see this life of two and half years almost one year it went through correction almost one and half year of correction 21 and then 22 has been about consolidation if we see the fundamentals also you see similar kind of thing playing the margins peaked out at the same time and the whole 2021 the margin was falling so price correction margin correction price consolidation margin consolidation and then you can see there is some hint of margins going up sales was not an issue in last one year i think after mr kripalu has come the sales growth has come back and you can see uh, the company is doing decent sale last two quarter if you see they have been hitting 7 and 9% growth rate uh, this number ideally should go higher and i will tell you why so margin wise looks like we are about to turn around sales wise we are doing okay and it can become better so this explains why the price fall and why the price consolidation and then why i am bullish now why these things have happened so there were lot of reasons and post covid it has been very challenging time for many businesses and for them also because they have plants uh, even in uh, you know western economies and china and all and we know the uh, inflationary issue which is there in western economies we know china is still grappling with its covid issues so all of that has led to huge pressure on the expense management side uh, also there were currency related issues so net net this margin fall and they being at the lifetime lowest margin right now is because of all of this and there are early signs of this revival happening and uh, the margins expected to increase the other thing is they are coming up with a plant in brazil and this is a new plant new capex so whenever you have a new plant you have front loaded expenses but the benefit you will get after that so that is another reason in terms of why margins affected and the same gives also hope in terms of how the growth can come and of course i discussed about the china issue because uh, china uh, they have their manufacturing also and also china is one of the revenue contributor and this whole uh, east asian market which is there uh, that has also been affected in terms of growth because of you know the whole ukraine issue and the china thing and all of that so when we combine all of these it has led to lesser revenue growth it has led to pressure on margin and businesses always have good times and bad times and after bad times only the good time comes so this looks like the worst case scenario where everything is factored and now there are signs of good times uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, some of the uh, capex going live some of the country issues subsiding the inflationary issues subsiding and all of that and then if we look at valuation so this is where i explained if you look at pe basis and especially if you have a business with margin compression with capex your pe will always look inflated uh, so uh, something like a price to sales market cap to sales could give a good idea and then when we look at it 
actually on a TTM basis, this company has at lifetime lowest price to sales valuation or, you know, EV to sales valuation, or even if you look at EV to EBITDA basis, uh, th this is, uh, you know, nowhere in terms of a bubble territory. And then I have done certain DCF valuation based on a 10% growth rate, taking a mean margin. So I know the current margin DC is the worst margin, but I have not even taken their mean margin. I have taken a margin which is between their current margin and the mean margin. And of course, certain assumptions for DCF. And that way we see uh, there is almost a uh, 16% discount uh, on 175 rupee price. Or if we go with the kind of 10% growth and little higher margin, and if we give a 20 multiple because the FMCG companies, they work on 35, 40x multiple. And this being one of the suppliers to FMCG companies, uh, we are giving 20x multiple. It gives a return CAGR of 17% in four years. So this was the story of EPL. This is how blend fundamental and technical. There are a lot of learnings. I This is a very, very small presentation. I have not gone in a lot of detail, but these are very big learnings. The big learnings are not everything which falls permanently falls. This is where you find value. And technical analysis is not only about finding momentum. Technical analysis is also about understanding the basis, finding uh, value opportunities. That is one. Uh, second, patient space. I mean, there is a two and a half years of wait. I, I am heavily impressed by Mr. Kripalu. That doesn't mean that if he has gone, I will just go and buy the company. So there is no single thing which works. To make a successful investing decision, a lot of things needs to be taken care of. Third is leadership. We should always keep track good leadership and a good leadership uh, when always respect valuation. I am totally against this statement that valuations doesn't matter. Uh, even with great leaders, we need to respect valuation. Blend technical and fundamental. So this is an example of how to blend technical and fundamental. And then of course, we need to do our study and look for triggers and the tailwinds and then manage our risk. So I hope this was a good learning and I will see you soon with another video. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you.